Good morning, folks. Happy July 1st. It is a great day, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. So Mr. Rogers would say, this is your favorite Huffington Post journalist, contributor, and media maven, Kimberly Jessica, reporting in live today from Hollywood, California. And I'm here with a personal favorite of mine. I've known this gentleman for about almost 10 years. Uh, he has been a client. We've worked together. We love, we love, we fought, we came back together, we've worked together, we've created programs together, we've written books together. And I have to tell you, I have watched this guy make strides and I've watched him evolve and really do some amazing things with his business and his, with his life in spite of what life has tried to throw his way in terms of his health, in terms of job loss, in terms of job gain, being a dad and being a husband and being a uh, an evangelist minister and being an author. You know, no matter what life threw this guy's way, he turned around and he just made uh, literally a dollar out of 15 cents. He made, he took lemons and made lemonade. He, he just, he, you know, he, he, he got knocked down and picked up his cot that he was laying in the bed with, which is his hospital bed, put her on his back and walked out the hospital. This is what you call perseverance and victory. He's an author. He's a speaker. He's a motivator. He's a business coach. He's a dad. He's a TV host. He's a husband and a lover of God, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you guys none other than my good friend, author, speaker, motivational coach, Brian Tracy, author and coach, Carl H. Jones, Daddypreneur. How are you today, Carl? Hi, Kimberly. How are you doing today? Ah, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, the funny thing is... Uh... I heard speakers say they're very humble by the introduction. I I feel it now myself. Like, that's all me? And, yeah, by the grace of God, it is. <laughs> it is you. And, you know, Carl, you have such an amazing story. You know, people look at ministers on TBN. They look at T.D. Jakes. They look at Joe Olstein. They look at all these ministers, and they see the grace and the greatness, but they don't see the story. They don't see that, not saying T.D. Jakes person, but they don't see the fact that a lot of people that are doing amazing things get up in the morning and have to take a pill just to stay alive. Get up in the morning and have to take a pill just to keep their heart beating. Get up in the morning and have to look a family member in the face that things aren't going well, but they have to keep going even after you've done all you can. All you can do is stand, and that's what you've been doing. You've been standing. So, Carl, yeah. tell us about your story. What made you, from day one, get into saying to yourself, I've got to do more and be more of who God made me to be and realize, that, and, and realize to yourself that you are more than just your job? What happened? Share with us that story. Well, the, the journey is interesting because um, just a quick all the way back when I was, when I graduated high school, I wanted to go to this certain computer company. I was all excited about it, but over that summer, uh, Investigative Seven News showed that the whole school was a scam, and my heart was just dashed over that. So, mm -hmm. a couple of years I ended up in college, and then I found this great company uh, that I started working for, the storage company. But I'm still thinking, okay, I need to do something with my life. And I found uh, an infomercial company, and they presented products and services that I was excited about. That was a journey for me that right there, the journey of self-development. Mm. Wow. So it was your journey of self-development and how, how it changed your life. And in between all this, what made you say to yourself, I want to start my business and start living authentically while making a change and making great income? So what, when I was working at that company, I started seeing the possibility of selling products and services to people with millionaires. I started thinking, hey, I could be better. I saw cars and sheets on TV. I was not really interested in real estate. I figured you make money. But, like, what could I make money and passion? Then I started listening to Tony Robbins and Brian Tracy. And I was like, wow, 
you know, because I had been recently started giving sermons at the church and doing introductions for my pastor. And from there, I ended up uh, getting my cable TV show, which actually uh, this year has been on TV for 18 years. Wow. Tell us about your TV show, Carl. You know, my, my television show is, is called Wisdom for Life. It's inspirational programming. I can compare it to Joel Osteen because one of the things people, because they see me on the streets of Chicago, they said, you're different from those other guys. You're not yelling. You're not screaming. And I actually know what you're talking about, and I can relate to it. You know, it's funny that you said that. I had a television executive say about you earlier this week that whoever this guy is, his stuff is extremely impressive. And what was even more amazing, that he turned around after looking at your stuff before posting it, he says, not only is his stuff impressive, but he's he's a brown guy. You don't see that from a brown guy. What are your thoughts on, on a comment like that, Carl? Well, you know, that that's interesting in the journey, too, because when I was younger, my father was the old school. I'm not going to tell you I love me. I just work hard. The only time my father ever hugged me was like maybe a month or two before my mom died. That's because he saw me looking sad. And so that took a toll on me. And so that self-development and my relationship with God started making me the man who I am today, and it made me want to reach out to other young men. And that's what I've noticed. When I started the daddy for new journey, you know, it wasn't making a lot of money at first, and then a lot of people criticized me. You're a man. you supposed to be going out to work. I am working. I'm, at that time, I was taking care of my children, and um, I think I mentioned to I left the job that I was at, which I love, because they wanted me to sell pornographic material. I couldn't do oh that. Oh, my time. gosh. So you kept your integrity, Carl. Yes. It was, I mean, that's true to your values. Fight. That's it. Some people... You know, at the at the job, he's like, oh, wow, I wish I was brave as you. And I was thinking, God's going to have to do something because my son was only four months old. And back then, when you quit a job, you didn't get unemployment. And by the grace of God, I was able to do it, but it still wasn't enough. So I had to go on a journey of what do I do next. And that's what, that was my journey right there. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. So you, you maintained your integrity regardless of what it would have done. So was that was that the, the, the turning point? Would you say that was the turning point for you, saying you wanted to start your own business? Yeah, because I was like, I can't have nobody tell me you better sell this or you fire it. If I'm selling something or presenting something, I need to have my heart in it. And at that time, it was uh, one big uh, mogul who created the possibility of selling products and services from the house. So I actually started out selling things on Amazon, and eBay, products and services that I control, that I believe in. Wow. Wow. So what brought you to saying to yourself, Carl, I want to be a motivational speaker, I want to be an author, I want – what What brought you – because you've written several books. You, you, Confessions of a Daddypreneur is one of the books that you've written. What what are one of the things that inspired you to say, okay, I'm I'm going to write this book because, you know, I really – it's an amazing book, by the way. It's a really easy read, folks. Um, you know, it's really giving stats, the step-by-step system, literally to create their own information products and market it and start their own business. You know what happened Tell to us me? What, what motivated you to start that. Uh, in the journey, I saw other guys around me, like I said, compromising and doing things like, no, they need a system that they can control and believe in. And at that time, I partnered with you and other PR coaches to help me formulate the ideas that I just had in my head that I just need to get them out of my heart onto some paper. You know, it was even sad. This one guy, he was having troubles. He was a great salesman. And at the time, the Chicago Bulls was really great. So he would lie and tell people, hey, if you buy three of them, I'm going to stuck some bull tickets in there. Oh, Wow. And it eventually caught up to him in about a month or two, and he was a great salesman, but he was just panicking because he had bills due, and he the sales wasn't as quick as he wanted. So I wish I would have had something. You know what? Maintain your integrity. You're a great salesman. You ain't got a lot of people to sell. And um, so this book is to help somebody, especially if they're unemployed like men, because unemployment don't it barely keep you alive. But you need to say, okay, I'm unemployed. Let me use this time to develop myself, which I did a lot. The products I sold, I used them for myself, my family. Um, my son, he was, um, when he went to kindergarten, 
he was actually able to read and write. He said, oh, you have to do that. But, yeah, but he learned from the, the reading program that I had. I actually was featured on Oprah years ago. I used that for my son. So all the products I believe in, I'm going to use it for myself. Wow. Wow. So this is how you were able to use that content, incorporate it into your own, and start your own pro- and start and write your own program. Exactly. And um, and also holding my skills, I, I taught at the Discovery Center here in Chicago for three years, a program called Get Free and Prosperous Living, and that gave me more skills. I mean, to preach is one skill, but being able to get a person to develop themselves, of course, God is our source, but say, hey, I'm better than my job. And right now, in my business, I'm reaching out to executives who are dads who say, I don't want to have to work 60 hours a week because I'm not 